Hi, Dr. John here. Now I want to talk about what are the most common clinical signs that we see with DM and how we incorporate those clinical signs into the five different stages of the disease. And so really the first stage is stage one and we call that the early stage because most people won't notice changes that they will associate with DM. So very few people are diagnosed in stage one or the early stages. And when I talk about slight changes, a lot of people confuse those changes because we know DM is an older dog disease that their dog's just getting old. They've got hip dysplasia because a lot of the signs are the same that we see with hip dysplasia, trouble getting up, slowness, to move that will resolve and work out, um, shuffling of hind feet, um, wearing out of the innermost nail, but that's a sign that we're now getting DM, not wearing out of all the nails across. Um, tail, not as erect, but maybe a little bit limp, um, but still is erect. And so I'd say 90% of people don't pick up that it's stage one that their pet potentially has degenerative myopathy going on. It's just those special pay or clients that are one have pre-genetically tested their pup because they are a breed that's predisposed to the disease so they know they're a carrier or they'll have developed DM. So they're conscious and hyper vigilant or they're elite athletes that are now knocking bars or doing things that just aren't quite right and they want to get a workup. Most people are diagnosed in stage two, and we call that the early to mid stage. And when I'm saying stage two, are most people diagnose because now they're starting to see signs that are a little bit more than you would normally see with hip dysplasia. So the tail is now becoming a little bit more flaccid. Clients will say, my dog's not happy to see me when I come home. He used to bound about, tail wagging madly. Now it's limp and just goes side to side. I think he's upset with me. Or they will say, my, we're now starting to see as we're walking, they're stumbling, they're falling over, they're dragging their feet, um, they're shuffling. Um, they're co not so coordinated that they used to be. Um, their rear legs aren't as strong as they used to be. We may start to see some urinary or fecal incontinence. Not so much in stage two, but it can happen. And so we then see stage three, and stage three I call the mid-stage. This is about the peak of the curve. As things are progressing, but we're still, some people haven't had a diagnosis yet. And so now, we're seeing that when a loss of tail movement, the tail is now got, will move, but it's side to side. It doesn't have the perkiness or not coming up anymore. Um, jerky motions when they're walking. And so I like to say, the clients will say they have a look on their face like they're really concentrating but placing every foot placement with their hind limbs. And if they're distracted, ball, squirrel, bird, they fall over, they stumble, they trip, they're uncoordinated. They will drag their paw through and not correctly place it. Or they'll stand there and have their paw bent over. They won't be placing it correctly because that's a sign of losing the peripheral nerves where you know where self is. So I'll stand there now with their paw this way, where they should be standing through and placing and standing in an upright position. They will be wobbling and, knock and knuckling, and they're classic signs for stage three, the mid-stage. This is also where we start to see fecal incontinence, urinary incontinence as well. And this is where we definitely have a diagnosis of DM when clients walk through the door and they say, I don't know what's going on. And we see the, the patient walking in, stumbling, not correctly placing on the neurological exam, they have deficits in their hind limbs, then where it's easier to make a diagnosis of degenerative myopathy. But also when we're talking about diagnosis, it is an elimination. It's a diagnosis of elimination. So we have to check off all the boxes there. It isn't except for now the genetic blood test, a definitive diagnosis. 
So with stage four, this is what I call the late stage. And there really is no definitive line between stage three and stage four, between the mild to the late, but I like to say when they lose proprioception, deep pain and sensation in their hind limbs, they're totally paralyzed. And so that's where I draw the line between stage three and stage four. They now need a cart or a harness device to help get them around. They're fecally and urinally incontinent. They have um, unable to move their back limbs because they're par paralyzed, so they drag themselves forward with their front limbs. This is where I say is stage four or the late stage. And this stage then can move really quickly or can move slowly. And when we're saying slowly, I'm talking about months. And when I'm talking quickly, I'm talking about weeks to progress then through to stage five that I call the final stage. And this is where we start to see ascending paralysis. The paralysis moving up towards the front limbs. We're starting to see um, the same clinical signs we saw with the hind limbs. Incorrect placement, staggering, weakness, not able to drag themselves forward. Uh, panting, trouble breathing, because we're now seeing paralysis starting of the diaphragm. And so these are the final stages. And very few clients will get through to stage five. My personal pet, or my wife's pet, um, Tova, we had her through to stage five because we're both veterinarians. She came to work with us every day. We had an army of technicians that would look after, express her bladder. She would lie on a beautiful mat at the reception desk, still greeting everyone because that's the hardest part of this disease, is they're mentally still all there, their body just doesn't work. So very few people get through to stage five, but I like to talk about it because some people do, and some people are able to medically manage their pet through to this stage. So they're the five stages. So we have the early stage, early to mid stage, mid stage, final stage, and late stage. And they're all the different clinical signs now. Not every pet follows the rules. So all the different clinics, clinical signs can happen faster or happen slower just because it is a neurological disease of the demyelination of the swan cells and the death of the axon cells in the spinal cord. So the progression rate of the disease can vary between patients, but generally they follow the same rules as the disease progresses through the different five stages of degenerative myelopathy.